I guess you'd call it found text and it's based on a Supreme Court decision. And it was based on an, uh, a, a flag burning that occurred at the Republican convention in Dallas when Ronald Reagan was being renominated. Anyway, it was a case called Johnson versus the US. And it's at volume 491, US page 397, 1989. And it goes like this. Gregory Lee Johnson burned an American flag while protesters chanted. No one was physically injured or threatened with injury, although several witnesses were seriously offended. Johnson was convicted of desecration of a venerated object in violation of a Texas statute. America, the red, white, and blue, we spit on you, was not an invitation to exchange fisticuffs, rules Mr. Janet, uh, Bre Mr. Justice Brennan at page 409, nor imminent lawless action, just a mere Dallas die-in. Johnson himself took no part in spray painting walls and overturning potted plants. He did accept an American flag handed him to him by a fellow protester who had taken it from a flagpole outside one of the targeted buildings. After the demonstrators dispersed, the witness collected the flag's remains and buried them in his backyard. Texas Penal Code, not what you think, section 42.09 reads an impertinent part. For purposes of this section, well, really for most other purposes, Desecrate means deface, tarnish, dishonor, damage, cast contempt upon, mutilate, burn, defile, trample, bruise, crush, inflict injury, sort of like the plagues at Pesach, right? Or otherwise physically mistreat in a way that will seriously offend one or more persons. Defendant Johnson committed a class A misdemeanor while Ronald Reagan was being renominated for president. The majority of the court called it conduct sufficiently imbued with elements of communication. Mr. Justice Rehnquist at page 603 communicates his dissent. <clears throat> Our flag is the one visible manifestation of 200 years of nationhood and manhood. The use of an emblem to symbolize some system, idea, or institution is a shortcut from mind to mind. Causes and nations, lodges and ecclesiastical groups seek to knit, great line, the loyalty of their followings to a planner, flag or banner, a color or design. Pregnant with expressive content, the flag as readily signifies this nation as does the combination of letters found in America, A-N-E-R-I-C-A. It's quite a position, juxtaposition, saith Gregory Lee Johnson, the plaintiff. We had new patriotism and no, new patriotism and no patriotism. See the record at page 656. See supra, see infra, let's see. One more poem. And this was written uh, shortly after 911, goes like this. I cannot pledge allegiance to the flag, nor to the Republican administration for which it now stands, flying over the skies of Afghanistan, nor to the Minister of Homeland Security, when insecurity reigns like so many tears and misguided, Mitchell, mis misguided missiles. One nation, indivisible? I don't think so. Perhaps a nation of invisibles like the many flags gathering dust on attic floors and hardware store shelves only now defiantly unfurled and saluted. Invisible, like the Punjabi cab driver who must paste a decal on his windshield lest his loyalty be questioned. Invisible, like the schoolgirl who must leave her hijab at home for fear of taunts and stares at her covered hair. Invisible, like the Iraqi grocer who displays a star-spangled poster not to sell Budweiser, but to ward off bricks and stones. So say, can you see how united we stand under one nation, under God, Adonai, Jehovah, Mars, Yahweh, Ares, Hashem, Krishna, Allah. United we stand behind a policy of bombing Afghanistan, arming Pakistan, muting criticisms of Uzbekistan, currying favor with Tajikistan, calming fears in Turkmenistan, supplying airborne humanitarian food aid with liberty and justice for all or just us.